Get ready. It's time to have some fun, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield. From KDKA TV Studios in downtown Pittsburgh, it's Pittsburgh Today Live. that we keep finding ways to celebrate Tuesdays for me. I know. We're making it a little better for the day of the week that Heather likes the least. Yes. So today, of course, is Fat Tuesday. Before Lent, it's your chance to get all the sweets in. I, so I, we're going to celebrate this. I saw someone joking today that every Tuesday is Fat Tuesday for them. Well, you know, that's kind of true <laughs> that here on funny. the show, too, because we always have something. And we have research that sort of speaks to all of this. Yes. So listen to this. It sounds really alarming, but it's not as bad as you think. More than half of Americans are cheating on their partners with, with food. food. <laughs> dot, 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 dot. Yes. yes. I, I totally get this. I totally understand this. Okay, right. so they, they surveyed 2,000 Americans mm -hmm. in a poll. 71% make unhealthy choices behind their partner's back. 55% have hidden food from their partner even. Hidden like what, food? Like what? Like Snickers? Like they have a stash hidden away somewhere? Right. Well, do, does that happen in your household? No. Of course, I, if Frankie's watching, you're gonna, he's going to know now. Here's but. the thing. We don't hide things. I just make him come down that dark path with me. I'm like, you want to exactly. get Chinese food today? Well, and for me, it's almost like a confessional. Right. Like, you know, I'll, I'll come home and I'll say, you know, I had, donut, mm -hmm. I had a donut, I had pizza. I, you know, these are all the ways that I did not do so well. This is the worst. I come home around lunchtime and Frankie mm -hmm. is usually leaving the gym around that same time and so I'll hear him sometimes on the phone and I can hear that he's eating and I know he's gone through a drive through Like, where'd you, <laughs> where'd you stop? You're such a super sleuth. So you can, you can hear. Where'd you go? <laughs> he can hide nothing from you. And then I hear Sunny <laughs> in the background, chicken nuggets and french fries. <laughs> It's funny. I know. Rats them out. <laughs> All right. Well, it turns out as much as people sometimes hide yeah. their food choices from their spouse or their partner, there's actually some positive that came out of this study too. Because there's a way that your partner might be encouraging good things, and yeah. that makes up today's list. So, uh, nearly half, 49%, say that they trust their partners the most to make sure they're sticking to their healthy eating goals. So it's their partner that they rely on the most. I feel like I'm failing my. Partner. Partner. <laughs> Three and four people say they've influenced their partner to be healthier. And 77 say their partner has positively influenced their overall life and well being. And I would say that's absolutely true in my case. I feel like we have not done a very good job with each other either. What? You mean? The well, two of us. Well, we, yes. you mean with food? Yes. Well, it's hard with the, with this show. We we all want to sample something, you know. We all want to sample. Something. We do. I mean, yeah. like when someone comes on, and for you at home, I feel it's our duty <laughs> to sample it <laughs> and to see what the food tastes like, so that you know whether you you want to make it or you want to go to that Absolutely. restaurant or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The the thing is, and I was saying this to Mikey this morning. The thing is, or or Selena this morning. Um, it's when we stop. Do we stop? Like, do we have like a, just a couple bites on TV, or do we go back to the kitchen and finish off that bowl? And we go back to the kitchen. We go and back. Finish off the bowl. Don't think we stop at just one bite ever. We finish no. the whole thing. I've gained some weight since I started on this show. We all have. Yeah. Don't worry. Anyhow, all right. We're going to move on. We're going to move <laughs> on to what makes a successful marriage, keeping with the relationship theme. And actor Harrison Ford has a suggestion. He says the key to a successful marriage is to just be quiet. Do you think this is true? <laughs> no. he, says, he says he told Parade Magazine, don't talk, just nod your head. This is not true. <laughs> he also says making sure his chores are done is important. He, of course, is married to actress oh. Calista Flockhart, Ally McBeal. I will always think of Ally McBeal when I see Callista Flockhart. But anyway, they've been together for 18 years. They've been married for almost 10. And no, I don't think that's good advice. No. I think he was being funny. I think that he was trying to be. Yeah. yeah. He was saying it in jest. It almost but I don't sounds think... like we want to send in like a hostage people to go get him out. You know, any, just be quiet, keep your head down. <laughs> any number of the therapists that we have on the show to provide relationship <laughs> advice would probably disagree with that. Yes. No. Like they always talk about communicate, absolutely. Talk. Yeah. Don't talk, just nod your head. Just nod your head. Yes, Keep dear. your head down. Follow yes, your dear. chores. <laughs> the honey-do list. Come yeah. on. 
Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Okay, well, are you a fan of Friends? If yes. you are, a lot are you? A yeah. lot of people are happy about this because there will be a reunion. I couldn't be any happier. I don't you know get who it. I am? No, That's I don't. That's Chandler. Oh. <laughs> Marie gets it. See, I didn't I was never a fan of Friends. Really? Yeah. Well, see, you know what? I didn't like it in the beginning. Like the first couple episodes mm -hmm. I didn't like, and then I got into it. And now it's like comfort food television, you I, know? I may be wrong about this, but I just feel like you either had Friends or Seinfeld. And I was on the Seinfeld side of things. Oh, really? Yeah. I would rather watch that than watch Friends. And I'd see, love to see I, a Seinfeld I love Seinfeld, too. I think Seinfeld was great. It was just a different energy, a different vibe. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the reason we're talking about this, we didn't quite get to the... So Jennifer <laughs> the Aniston why. posted over the weekend that there is going to be a Friends reunion, and then all of Instagram went crazy. There's like 10 million likes for this post. So it's going to air in May on HBO Max, which is their new streaming service. And it doesn't sound like it's a typical episode. It's just like them getting together for this unscripted thing, It'll be interesting to see it. Yeah. Again, if you're a friend. A friend of friends. <laughs> if you're a friend of friends, and yeah. you're not. So I was going to ask. I which... don't hate the show. I would just never, if, if there's reruns playing, I would right. never stop and say, oh, I want to watch this episode uh, again. See, I would. I like it. But anyhow, that's okay. We're allowed to have differences. No. Yeah. We, we can't. <laughs> no, we can't. And David, keep your head down and be quiet. Just nod, please. <laughs> well, are you also a fan of Back to the Future? Michael J. Fox <laughs> saying some stuff about this and about a reboot. Yeah, so uh, it turns out they talked to the creator of Back to the Future, one of the creators, and they were asking, would you ever do a reboot of this? I mean, they had three movies back in the 80s, and he said, no, absolutely not. And why not? Well, I, I, he, in fact, he had a very strong quote. What did he say? It would be like selling your kids into prostitution is what he told the BBC. That is a, that is a strong quote. However, they're doing something <laughs> else. They have devised a musical uh, a stage musical based on Back to the Future, and it opened last Thursday. It opened in Manchester, England. If it does well, it's going to go to London and then possibly Broadway. Little known fact, I've never watched the Back to the Future Never? Movies. Only in bits and pieces. Okay. Frankie will stop and watch them anytime. Right. I swear, anytime it's on TV, we're watching it. I just have never seen it from start to finish. All right, well, that's on our to-do list. We have a movie have, marathon coming up soon. We have a movie soon. marathon with Cosmos. Filled with 1940s movies, too. Yeah, well, those are my <laughs> movies. <laughs> All right, we love it when we find something that we can truly say, that's so Pittsburgh, because this next thing, I think, is pretty Pittsburgh. It is. Yeah. It is. That's, that's so Pittsburgh. So, Pittsburgh. so we're talking about <laughs> Turner's Dairy, who makes the iced tea that so many people love and oh my swear gosh. by. Yes. And take a look at what <laughs> one Port Authority bus driver decided to do to keep his iced tea cool. I think this is brilliant. Yeah, just hanging out the side uh -huh. of the Port Authority bus. So Turner somehow got a picture of this and then posted it and said, yeah, there you go. Uh, but yeah, that is so Pittsburgh. So we just wanted to share it with you. A true Yinzer hero is what they said. I <laughs> It seems like it could, I don't know, what if it you fell You think off? it's a safety thing? <laughs> well, what if it fell? Oh, I doubt it. I mean, fall. it's not going to cause like a major pileup, but still. No. I'm always thinking about what could happen. <laughs> what could happen? Well, I'll tell you what nearly happened. What? I almost burned down the newsroom yesterday. Oh, jeez. You don't know about this yet. Did you leave your heater on overnight? No, I didn't leave the heater on overnight, but the, our newsroom can get chilly. Even in the summertime, it can get chilly. So when it's winter, yes, I have a space heater. <laughs> Uh, the side of my desk. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yesterday I'm sitting at my desk and I, I never leave it turned on if I'm not there. But now I don't have the option. There's no more space heater. So yesterday I'm typing and then all of a sudden I hear it turn off and I turn over and there's smoke <gasps> coming up the top of, and then I immediately think, okay, unplug, unplug. Uh, there are no flames. Uh, but I'm looking around thinking, like, what do I do with this smoke? Because I look up and we have smoke detectors. What if, like, the sprinklers went off and it was you all my fault? You ruined all of the computers in right. the news? So I take the heater oh, and man. I'm running. Like, I'm thinking, well, i got to get it outside. And, like, I'm carrying it like it's, it's a bomb that Superman's, like, ready to throw Please in Please tell me there's space. video of this. There's no video? Now, I don't, well, there might be security footage. We need to check the cameras. So then I get to the front lobby, which is the only way we can get out. And so I, I'll take it outside so, it, like, let it quit smoking and then I'll throw it away or dispose of it somehow. 
Well, I pause because then I think if I take it outside, someone's going to think it's a bomb or, oh, or yeah, call the bomb squad. Out, right? So I just stand there in front of the, the, the front guard desk and I'm frozen. And so the guard, fortunately, he notices me and takes pity on me and says, what's wrong, David? And I explain, my heater had caught on fire and now oh, it's gosh. smoking and I don't know what to do with it. If I put it outside, the bomb squad's going to come and then inside the smoke alarm, you know, and he said... I'll take care of it, David. <laughs> so I don't know what he did with it, but he took it from me, and thank you. I'm so sorry you <laughs> had to go through all of that. It was a rough day. <laughs> it's a rough day. I'm so sorry. I'm, I, but I am glad that and you did not I'm, burn the building down. No, and I need to buy a new heater. I went to Rite Aid this after, or yesterday afternoon, and they had no heaters. I don't think that's a good idea for you. What? To get a new heater. You don't think I should well, get I think it? you should just bring a sweater. After that harrowing yes, story? Yes, I think that's probably right, best. We'll work that out later. Okay, Ron Smiley <laughs> says rain and snow are on the way, and we're not going to let that get us down on this nope. Tuesday because we're beating the winter blues with some good stuff ahead. We have a lot ahead. We do. We're going to start with a stop at Oakmont Bakery that wow. would make anyone feel better, right? Selena Pompey, Aunt Selena Pompey Annie is there for today's Around Town feature because area bakeries like Oakmont are jumping today. They are getting ready for today's Fat Tuesday crowds. This Selena is helping out on the assembly line. Yes, yeah, she's no, her. Selena, not that way. <laughs> Don't do that. She's making punchki. <laughs> We're going to check in with Selena in just a little bit. And we have to figure out how to say it. Punchki? I think it's punchki. We're yeah. going to ask Selena. Also ahead, spring trends to beat the winter blues. See what fashions are in for spring and why it may seem like everything old is new again. And catch today's Take It Home Tuesday deal to save you money only on PTL. Then start planning your winter escape. We will tell you where to find some spots at great prices that you can visit from Pittsburgh, coming up with a local travel expert. It's all ahead when PTL comes right back on this oh, Tuesday. No, no, no. What? Go back to the video. You want to go back to the video? <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, February 25th. Thanks for watching us, everybody.